Hi, I'm Christopher Titus, and this is the Armageddon Update. And today, we are doing a public service. Now, I know a lot of you white people walk around thinking to yourself, is that racist? If, if, Am, am I a racist? I mean, I've never walked around screaming, Jews will not replace us! Replace us? I didn't know there was a, a Jew alien body snatcher coalition. Okay, so far you're good. And on the surface, not a racist. Now, America was built on the premise that all men are created equal. Men. Women, though, still don't have equal rights. <laughs> and they are mad about it. But boy, aren't women so cute when they're mad? <laughs> so... How to know if you're a racist. Well, do you own an apartment building and you won't let brown people live in it? Then you might be a racist. In 1973, our president, Childish Orangino, and his dad were sued because their apartment building had no people of color living in them. And all of those people's applications to get into the apartment building all had a C on them. Well, at least they didn't use an N, right? Oh, uh, look at my African-American over here. You racist motherfucker. Trump had to settle the case. And then they did it again and were sued again in 1978. Say what you will, but at least the racist in chief is very consistent. Now, the Constitution also says innocent until proven guilty. But you might be a racist if you hear about a crime and assume that a black person did it. That's called pulling a Zimmerman. Shout out to Trayvon. Now, unless it's a white collar crime and then we know it's a Republican. Oh, yeah, I'm racist, but only against white people. <laughs> I hope we get some Jews to replace them. Now, in 1989, our president. <laughs> Sorry, president. Ah. In 1989, Trump said that the Central Park Five, five brown men accused of raping and killing a woman should be executed. They should be made to suffer. He actually spent his own money on a full page newspaper ad and said they should be killed. Well, they were convicted in 1990. So wait, the president isn't a racist. And, and he was right. Nope. Like selling steaks, vodka, or water, he was a loser. In 2002, all the men were released because the DNA evidence proved that they were innocent. They got $41 million. That's right. And sweet potato, Hitler still said, I still think they were guilty. Okay, so now Trump is definitely a racist. A very committed racist. You know, I like an asshole that sticks to his stupid. Now, what are the other signs you might be a racist? Well, let's use our obese, tiny-handed leader as a baseline. He is our example, after all. We elected him. If you're trying to build a casino and your argument about the competing Indian casino is, they don't look like Indians to me, and they don't look like Indians to Indians, you might be a racist. If you are on a television show called, oh, let's say, I don't know, The Apprentice, and you pitch a storyline where we pit black people against white people. It would be nine blacks against nine whites, all highly educated, very smart, strong, beautiful people, right? You might be a racist. If you have 10 different companies and none of those companies have black employees as management, <laughs> you might be a racist, especially after all those companies went bankrupt. And in that case, you might be an imbecile racist. If you think the first black president wasn't born in America and demand his birth certificate for five years. And I just say very simply, why doesn't he show his birth certificate? Now, if this sounds like you, we've cracked the code. Guess what? You're a racist. You might be a racist if you, if you think Nazis are good people. Then definitely, you're a racist. Trump didn't take out an ad when the white supremacist killed Heather Heyer. And we have video of the dude killing her. Although that good person is now doing 500 years in prison. Yeah, how'd that work out for you, master race? If you call African countries shithole countries, you might be a racist. Even if you own property in New Jersey, I find that ironic. If you call Mexicans thieves and rapists, you may be a racist. If you lock those people in concentration camps and take away their kids, you may be a racist. If you want to change the plaque, on the Statue of Liberty to say, can't take you anymore. We can't take you. Our country is full. Our area is full. The sector is full. Can't take you anymore. I'm sorry. You may be a racist. 
If you pick out four minority women who got elected to Congress to save this country from a pillow-fisted, obese, illiterate, wannabe dictator, and you said these women hate America and should go back to where they came from and fix their countries, well, <laughs> you racist, blowhard, tard. They came from America, dickhead, and that's what they're doing. They're trying to fix their country. They are trying to stop a sequel, Hitler Part 2, The Comb Over. And if you follow, voted for, and support anyone who has done all of these things, then there is no might. You are a racist. You need to go and get a tattoo of a swastika with mom on it. And get a MAGA clan hat and continue to go against everything America was built on or stands for. And if this statement made you mad, <laughs> you just proved me right, racist. Please leave your misspelled comments under this video. I'm Christopher Titus, and this is the Armageddon Update. Next up, Richard Marks, people. Hey everybody, Christopher Titus, Titus Podcast. Today we have an amazing show, as always with me, the beautiful bombshell Ray. What's up, people? But I gotta tell you, uh, we've been lucky. Since we've gone to video podcasts, people, uh, especially pretty people who want to be seen, have uh, agreed to do the podcast. Uh, with us today, uh, a man who sold 30 million records. Uh, uh, you know, honestly, one of my musical heroes for a long time, guy I've always listened to, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Richard Marks. Yay. Pretty people. And me. <laughs> yeah, no, no, dude, that hair, again, it takes you to a new level. Uh, we were talking magical. about your hair, and we, we went back. I went, look at the album covers. The hair was always perfect. Well, my hair is out of control right now. It's like I'm, I decided, my wife convinced me. She said, don't cut it. Don't cut it. Just And I went, okay, it's it's veering into lesbian territory <laughs> Yeah. Okay. She said, it's just going through an awkward stage, and then it's going to just get so, so I'm still kind of But like, you're really a pretty lesbian, bro. Well, thank I got, you. I mean, thank I, you. And I mean that from a, as from a dude point of view. Really appreciate is. that. Uh, um, so uh, uh, basically, uh, Trump this week has... Uh, okay, so let's, oh let's go, let's go, let's go yeah, back. Let's just dive our, in. Our, Can I just say background. this first? We get that I am terrified of this combination because the two of you <laughs> are the same people on Twitter. It's mm -hmm. really frightening. And... I feel like when you join forces, this could create a force field that uh, will cause people to die. And that's what scares me. <laughs> as long as it's the right people. Listen, here's the problem. <laughs> no. So here's when we, we started following you on Twitter. You just said something. We, we laughed so hard. You actually said, I went to the dentist. Yes. Uh, I, I like to go to the dentist because I get to hear my music. I said, there's nothing wrong with my teeth. I just like to go listen to my song. <laughs> so we didn't know you yet. I saw that on Twitter. I, I lost it. Hard to make a comic laugh. I came on the podcast and told everyone, go oh, follow Richard Martin. Marks, that. listen Thank to you. this tweet, yeah. and that's how this all began. Because uh, Dana Carvey told me years ago, I asked him, I go, what? I go, tell me about famous people. And he said, uh, the people with the most talent will be the nicest, the most accessible people. The people that are barely holding on will be raging assholes. Dude, I swear, I, I'm going to name drop. I had dinner with Chris Daughtry last night. Right. One of the coolest wow. people. Yeah. And we've been friends for a long time. We've written together. And he's in town for a couple of days on this project. We went out to dinner, and he mentioned something, a, a famous person uh, I'm sorry, a, a person that had a moment of fame that was such a dick to him. Right. And I went, but that, I said those exact words. I said, dude, historically, think about it. Mm -hmm. Everybody that I've met that's mega, Bono, Clapton, right? Yeah, Bono's actually going to save and adopting thousands of African children. That, he could also <laughs> be a dick, but he's not. He's also a really super nice guy. Right. And the people that are these mega long-term famous people, really uber talented people, tend to be gracious and mm -hmm. nice and kind. Yeah. And it's always the guy that sort of had a top 20 single in 1994 right. that's a raging asshole. Or like a the reality I'm too, show yeah, person. The I'm yeah. too sexy for my shirt guy, that guy's a dick. I don't even, <laughs> I don't even know it. I would just put money down. That guy's a raging asshole. Um, and, and we would go to a comedy, you know, do, I do comedy clubs. So in the morning I go do radio to promote the show, to whore the show. And uh, <laughs> reality shows, everybody... We go into the radio guys and they would be like, oh man, 20 minutes ago, we just had the people from The Bachelorette in here. She had an entourage of 14 people and didn't like the water we handed her. <sighs> and that happened how many times? All the time. Yeah. yeah. And but really, the just to segue, we have a reality show person as a president now. Yes. Right. Well, that and doesn't that make a whole lot of sense? Doesn't it? Sense. I yeah. feel like we could just end the podcast now. I think yeah. we've solved the solved the problem. And we have a, the first time I met you, I was it was 1987. I was on. We were both four. 
I was on the Kenny Loggins <laughs> tour. You were already having your, you were going to be five. You had your first, uh-huh. you're a little older than me. You had your first hit. Uh, and my you, big boy teeth. Yeah, you had yeah. your big boy teeth. I did. <laughs> uh, and uh, and Kenny Loggins, it, your, that album hit so hard. Loggins, we were on tour and Loggins goes, we got to go see Richard Marks. And he took us all and we went and saw, we went and watched you. And, and man, you were like, you were 20 something. You were like uh, badass. 23 and 87, yeah. Badass then. Oh, and we're, okay, you, and now, don't mean nothing. Now, I moved to LA. Uh, I toured with Kenny Loggins, then I moved to LA and ate it. Don't Mean Nothing literally was my uh, blueprint for this town. Yeah. Uh, the lyrics played in my head. I tell everybody right now, uh, I have a guy that just wrote a script and he had some interest and everybody, he'd go to these all these d- lunches and nothing happened. Right. And I said, because everybody's full of shit. Until the, until the money's in the bank, it's full of shit. And it all came from Don't Mean Nothing. When you wrote that, was it because of your four years in, in LA? Yeah. And you know, when I look back on it, I was 20... Four, 23 when that song came out. I was 22 when I wrote it. So, I mean, really, how cynical could I really have been? <laughs> but I was. Young I was. I was. I was already yeah. pissed off because I'd already had three straight years of, of – I come from Chicago and I come – more importantly, I come from a family and, and a father and a mother who ingrained two major things in me. One is your word is everything. Your word is your bond. Amen. And B – the, the only hate that they instilled in me was hate for racists and bigots. Like they they almost groomed me to be the person that we <laughs> sort of are, we share a brain in yeah. this way. The only people that I rage against or that people, the people that really I, I despise are racists and bigots. Yep. But getting back, you know, jumping back to the your first dad, one. Your dad, by the way, your dad uh, did jingles. Your dad, your dad yeah, was a musician dad was too. A, was a huge, well, he was a brilliant jazz pianist, but then he, yeah. he wrote. Oh, yeah, he was a jazz musician first and then to make money because that, that he, you know, he had a he, family. Yep. Yeah. And, and I love this guy because he, he was blue collar, knew he had to do, never got this one, but I have to do this. No, I'm going to do what I got to do to make money. It's awesome. And well, that's plus how he, you started, right? You yeah. sang some of the jingles right. for him. But my dad realized, even though he was a serious musician and a jazz guy, he also realized he had this knack for just coming up with these quickly these hooks. Right. You know, ask any mermaid you happen to see. What's the best tuna chicken? I mean, who would write? That's your dad? The music. Not the stupid well, he lyrics. Wrote the not the slogans. <laughs> he wrote the music. Wow. He only wrote the catchy tunes to these wow. great, to these famous commercials. That's in my DNA, that song. You know, that because I, I was a kid growing up. <laughs> That's weird. My dog's better than your dog. My dog's better than yours. Really? Cannel Ration Dog Food. I sang on that. My dad wrote it. I mean, I could. I'm or, way could, more. Yeah, I'm more impressed with I you. I was like, wondering. That. You <laughs> actually. I'm stoked. You were fine before, but uh, yeah. now you're like, whoa. It's crossed to a Springsteen level. I'm like, all right, okay. <laughs> yeah. No, well, absolutely. Right. Man, my dad was a badass. Yeah. But is that um, what you got it though? Is that where you got able to come up with hooks? He did. He still so. yeah. yeah. got to be right. DNA. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the word as your bond and and being on time and being a pro and that was ingrained in me. So I moved to L.A. and I'm just getting. Can I say grin fucked? Yep. Yes. I'm getting yeah. grin fucked on like every hour. And I, I <laughs> we became- We have a new phrase, gr- grin, grin fucked. fucked. I've never heard it before, but I'm now- Have you had it. your hourly grin fucked? <laughs> Go to Los Angeles. Yeah. I don't even get that. They don't even smile at me. They're just like, <laughs> nope. Aww, well, right. I had that too. I had people that uh, just- you know, David Foster, who's, you know, a very yeah. successful producer, told me I shouldn't sing. <laughs> and we, you know, we joke about it to this day because we've worked together. Yeah. We know each other. And every once in a while, he'll just go, did I, did I actually? I said, yeah, <laughs> you told me I shouldn't sing. And he always says, well, my thing is like, if you're going to be wrong, you be, should be wrong big. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. At least he took it. That's good. <laughs> but And Lionel um, Richie brought you out. Well, Lionel Richie didn't so much bring me out as he... When I was 18, check this out. I told the story on stage last night. Lionel Richie, I'm 18 years old. I'd written a total of four songs. But they were, for an 18-year-old, they were okay. I had pretty decent demos of them because my dad let me use his studio. And when I say let me use, I mean I had to pay for it. (laughs) He was like, it's not, my studio is not for free. Even though, (laughs) like you have a savings account. You've saved up money over the summer stuff. Like it's going to cost you, right? So I paid for the musicians. I paid to use my dad's studio. I had a pretty decent little pro sounding demo tape cassette and it went from this friend of mine that i went to high school with to his friend in college who knew a guy who grew up with a guy who was working with the commodores wow. so it's already four people removed right phone rings at my parents house i'm three or four months away from graduating from high school and it's lionel fucking richie wow and he says man I, you know i just heard your tape and i think you're really good it's the the anti-david foster 
Lionel was like, you should sing. <laughs> and he really liked my song sense. And he said, man, you should have heard my first four songs, you know, and like, you're so far ahead of the game and you should, I don't know what your plans are. And, you know, your parents are going to probably hate me because you're probably set to go to college, but you ought to move to LA, man, because you, you're better than most that I hear. And it was so encouraging. And my parents were like, go. So wow. I, I moved to LA at 18 with no job, with nothing. I just kind of came out here and. Well, you knew the next day you were going to get a contract. I that's thought 18, I did. That, that's how at 18 you <laughs> I was sure of it. When I moved to LA at, uh, in 88, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go. Got I'm going to logins. I'm going to, like, I'm just going to sell to the highest bidder. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the, the line is going to be long and I'm going to have to take a lot of meetings and say no a lot. Yeah. That, well, no, nah, that didn't quite work out. That <laughs> but what happened was that Lionel invited me down to the studio. He was making his first solo record. It's like six weeks after I moved here. And I was with my dad. My dad kind of helped me get settled in out here. And we went to the studio and and they had been working on background vocals on this song called You Are. You Are the Sun. Yeah. Yep. Huge hit. Yeah. They'd been working on these background vocals with these couple of singers for like two days. And I was like, two days? It should take 20 minutes to right. knock, knock this out, you know? They couldn't find the sound they were looking for, that Lionel was looking for. And all of a sudden, I'm sitting in the control room and he looks over and he goes, points to me. And, like, and I turn around, I'm thinking he's pointing to somebody behind me. He says, hey, come out here. He puts me in front of the microphone. He goes... I want you to sing the part I was singing. I'm going to go in the control room. And then he switched the parts with the other singers. Goes in the control room, hits the playback. We sing the chorus. And he goes, that's the sound I want. Wow. And I had a job. And he said, come back every day. Wow. Whether you're singing or not, you're welcome to be here and watch me make this record. It was like going to record producer college. Wow. That's That's awesome. how gracious this guy is. I love Lionel Richie now. I always did, but I mean, like, that no, no, no. He's, he's, he's a human he's, being. Who doesn't he's, love Lionel yeah. Richie? Okay, is it true that you overheard Kenny Rogers say that he needed a new song and within days you wrote Crazy? Almost. It was a tw within a 24 hour period. <laughs> okay, they're wrong. So we Lionel, fix this. I worked with Lionel for a couple of, on his first couple albums. And I guess it was in between the first two albums. So it would have been like 83. I'm 19. <laughs> Lionel <laughs> recommends me. This is me. crazy, I though. Know, I know. Re recommends me to Kenny Rogers, who's still the shit. Right. And I get hired for two days, two consecutive days on a Kenny Rogers album. So I go over and I'm singing on this one song or two songs. And and I br briefly, like, hi, Mr. Rogers, you know. But I, I'm in the control room and I overhear him telling his producer that they were one song short from on this album. And he even said what he wanted. He said, I need I need that romantic ballad, you know? We need an, that song, he said, that song that says what every woman wants to hear and what every man wishes he could say. And I had a session the next day with him. So I went home to my apartment that night and I wrote this song called Crazy. And the next day, we were on a break in between. They were taking one reel off to put the other reel on to sing and i pulled this move that any other situation that could have easily gotten me fired because it's, it's so, so not fucking cool want to point yeah. out how ballsy this is it's not so much but, ballsy as it is just potentially <laughs> stupid as fuck the same, uh, yeah, nah, but you have to go for it yeah you can't you, all you can all you, this is the thing is that like people always said that titus you're out of control i'm like i just do no i just this has to be done right and i heard what he wanted and uh, and it, it probably came into your head i mean it, romantic ballad you're the king i mean I, we were talking i was talking to ray before we finish the story i'm sorry to interrupt you uh, i was saying there's so many people that had their weddings your music played at their wedding and now that they've gotten divorced they, they cannot hear, hear that song it. anymore there's that and, and i also I, when, when now when people come up to me and as they do regularly at airports or restaurants or where they go oh we used your song at our wedding mm -hmm. and i always go should have known better <laughs> <laughs> don't mean nothing yeah right <laughs> you have another list hazard, hazard. Uh, so go ahead so you wrote that you hate right your, now what was this like because because are you is it just the balls of a 19 year old where you're just like hey yeah i wrote this no i was really scared Okay, good. But I, good. You were but, smart enough. You knew your dad. That's why your dad. Yeah. Didn't no, I that. was scared because I knew it, it, at its core, this was a fucked up thing to do for the background <laughs> singer. Right. Who's not, by the way, a working famous background singer in LA. Right. He's this, I'm a 19 year old kid who's only done a couple sessions and I'm going to go up to the artist and go, I've got a song. <laughs> like he could give a fuck. Did you right. do it like that? Because that would have been cool. Hey, hey, I fixed your album. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> Kenny, thank me now. <laughs> uh, I remember I was shaking, physically shaking. Like I was kind of nauseous going up to him. But I remember thinking, you, this is a fucking opportunity you have to seize right, right now. Yep. And I also really believed that what I wrote that night before was really strong. 
And with your background, it's valid if you knew it was good. I mean, you know. But I'd never had a song says, recorded. He always says, when I started comedy, he would tell me, you have to be a little bit delusional to make it in entertainment. Mm-hmm. So a lot delusional. If you don't believe yeah, in you, nobody lot. else is going <laughs> to believe in you. Absolutely true. And that's where I am right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they don't, and I do. <laughs> <laughs> but that, you know, that you have to believe that whatever it is that you see for yourself. Mm-hmm. And if you, if you, if you think small, that's what you're going to get. Right. And I was thinking big. I was like, I'm going to write a song tonight. I'm going to walk it in there tomorrow. I'm going to find an opportunity. He's going to listen to it and he's going to fucking record it. And it's going to be a hit. And to his credit, again, graciousness and a massive star. Like this yeah, guy oh, yeah. was massive. What year was this again? 84. Oh, this is, yeah, he was peak. 83 was, actually because the record came out in 84. This is a peak. This is kind of, that's a little bit of the peak of his whole career from this Right 75. before Islands in the Stream. Yeah. Oh my God. So he's still on that yeah, he, role. Right. He's, like, he's still up. He's I just post song. Lady. Yeah. So this is like two years after Lady. Yeah. And, wow. Um, so. Gambler? Was it Gambler? Uh, Gambler was a couple years before that. Got it. So I just walked up to him. I walked up to him and I said, "You know, I'm. I, I know that this is probably not cool, but I overheard you yesterday saying that you still needed a song, and I'm a songwriter, and I overheard you say what you needed, and I think I wrote something that kind of fits that." And I cringed for a second because he could have easily said, "Security, <laughs> exactly. Right. Why is the janitor fucking <laughs> exactly?" <talking to> me? <laughs> but again, gracious, he said to me, "Well, let's hear it." Right and there, there was, I had no demo tape equipment or anything like that. We walked into this other room. I sat at a piano. He sat right next to me. And I sat, I remember my hands were shaking. <laughs> and I played the song. He sat next to you? He Kenny sat Rogers. next to me on the stool. <laughs> That's awesome. He's like, let's see the, this kid already has the biggest balls I've ever seen. Let's see how big they really are. <laughs> so wow. Wait, so this, this is, and I've told this story before. So this is, when I get to the punchline, just know that this is a story I have told before and that Kenny jokes about as much as I do, okay? So I get to the end of the song, and Kenny goes, that's damn good, that's damn good. He goes, question. At the end, I said, I wrote this line, you are the dream that finally came true. And then I finished the song. He went, you know when you say you are the dream that finally came true? I went, yeah, he goes, could you say you're the dream that finally came true for me? And I went, yeah, true for me. <laughs> yeah, Simple yeah. as that. And he took 50% of the song. <gasps> he was now my co-writer. Because <laughs> oh, that's how that shit right, worked. Right. And I had a day and a half of like, I can't fucking believe that this is happening. And Right? Yeah. But then I was like, 100% of nothing is nothing. Right. Yep. And I would actually rather have my name as a co-writer with... So that song came out, went to number one on the country charts. Jeez. And it says, written by Kenny Rogers and Richard Marks. Cut to years later, he's doing, um, there used to be this show on A&E called Live by Request. Right. And I remember it just happened to be dial switching and he was on and he was doing, and people would call in and request songs and somebody called in and requested crazy. And he said, oh yeah, he said, this is one of my favorite songs. He goes, you know, uh, Richard Marks really wrote this song, but I get half the money. <laughs> All that. Again, I mean, the most talented people are that's, the coolest. That's right. And yeah. he's pretty like, gangster, actually. He made, yeah, yeah, that is gangster. Like, by the way, I made, took this kid over. He was 19. I by, basically yeah. I raped him, but right. he got half another. Right. <laughs> he said it on TV. Look, that's awesome. He 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 did, and he pulled a, a classic showbiz move. I got a really nice car out of it. And like like I made a lot of money from that song, and I was 19 years old. And guess what? I could say, I have a number one country single right yeah. now. And yep. it changed everything. And you were still a kid. I was still a kid. That's craziness. But I, uh, I wrote songs with him over the years. I, you know, he's not well. He's he's dealing with a lot of health issues right now. But I, I, I email him probably every six weeks, and he always sends me back in all capital letters. You know, <laughs> Richard, thank you so much for checking in. I'm an old man now, but it's really nice to hear from you. And um, why do old people always write in all caps? I just they don't they don't understand they're yelling and my they can't, grandfather their did eye, this. because their eyes are failing and they can't see the small <laughs> right, that letters. That's it. what I think. Oh, I think it's it's very okay. That I wrote what I meant to write. Um, As opposed to Trump, who capitalizes just because he's a fucking asshole. Oh <laughs> man, I love when they get. We were just no, talking no, really. This. Tell us what do you really yeah, think? No, we're gonna go to that. We're, trust me, we're gonna go to that. I <laughs> By the way, I, want, I have a song that we wrote for you. Yeah, exactly. This. I'll be giving it to you later. We brought our kazoo if you want security to play it to play it live. So we we were talking about Trump. We love when we when the reporters get a shot of his notes. 
Yeah. Because his notes, it's like, oh. if that's not evidence that we have a raging imbecile yeah. in the White House, it, they're always misspelled. We always, always laugh our ass off. And then we go, oh, wait, he's running the most powerful nation on the planet. That's not funny. Did you see Al Qaeda yesterday yep, on his notes? Sure did. <laughs> All caps, one word, A L C A I D A, Al Qaeda. And guess what? We wouldn't, I mean, maybe I would have a little bit of like, dude, learn to spell. But if he were a functioning, good leader, even if I disagreed with some of his policies, but if I thought he was a decent man who was really had right. our country's best interest at heart, I'd be like, so, and if he was like, yeah, I can't spell worth a shit, but you know what? I blah, 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 blah. I'd be like, dude, don't worry about it. Well, W, I mean, W, we had, when we look back at W at the time, I was up, I was like, this guy's an idiot. He was now so I, I look smart. at the, now I look like Donald that Trump guy. makes George W. Bush oh. look like Stephen Hawking. Hawking. Yes, he does. He does. And, <laughs> and, and we, and like, we were laughing. We like to uh, fool me once, shame on, shame That's on you. Favorite. Fool me twice, yeah. <laughs> won't get fooled again. <laughs> we won't get fooled again. We, we st we'll play that video every year and just to how? laugh again. And, and I look back on that man, and here's what you think his family cared about America. They cared about where we're going, even though his dad was ahead of CIA. And and you look at W, at least W knew knew how to believe in America. This dude he is He knew how slowly, to finish sentences. He yeah, knew, fin yes, exactly. That's, that's valid. He could form a full sentence. It's like, I, you know, we all had our issues with him. I'm from the South. You know, I it's- well, The whole, whole war thing. There's a lot of yeah. problems. But oh, compared yeah. to this dude- He was on TV. They were playing an old, you know, news clip from him. And I we were on the road and I walked into the bedroom where he was watching it without even thinking. And I went- God, do you remember when our presidents were so smart? Not even thinking. How oh, eloquent what? W is. <laughs> yeah. That's what Trump has made us do. Our perspective is really shifted now. Yeah. George W. Now, when you listen to him speak even then, in comparison, it sounds like a speech by Lawrence Olivier. Yes, yeah. it does. But then you hear Obama and you realize, oh, wow, did we fuck up? Like, how did we as a country have that? And then we have this guy now. And and I, I think it comes down to racism. I 100%. And that's what the Armageddon update was about. It's all about you want to prove. I can prove you're a racist. Yeah. If you believe these things and if you follow Trump. At this point, if, you, if, you, if you're wearing a, a cross, uh, if you're wearing, yeah. wearing a cross and you're wearing an American flag shirt, you're a hypocrite a, a, a thousand different ways. Wait, wait, you're a Christian, yet you back this dude and you say you're an American when he's slowly just, he's just taken like a planer to the Constitution. Well, they don't want to hear, aside from all the other list of things, they, nobody wants to hear about how treasonous this guy is. Right. What a traitor he really is, but by all accounts. I mean, look, we don't know any of it. We don't know for sure about any of it. We only, I can only go by what I hear and see out of his own mouth. Right. Um, I don't pay much attention. I am a, such an independent. I voted for president, both parties yep. in my lifetime. Mm -hmm. I have really believed in and felt great about Republican politicians and Democrats. Now I pretty much despise all of them like i'm that guy oh, yeah. now that just if oh you're a politician you're a fucking asshole yeah and i know that that's not right either but yeah. i don't i really don't believe that there's anybody in the scene that has anyone's interests in in mind except their own not well anymore. No. I, I think what, what now for me was and it, maybe it's just our age now we're getting older so we How just uh even one you year younger are... than you um uh, oh i thought you guys were the same exact no age. he just he, he, he 56 what year younger. were you born 63 Oh, 63. Yeah, we will be uh, uh, October October uh, 1st. I'm uh, going to be 54. Wow, we look good. No. Man. No, I'm going to be 55? Yes. God damn it. No. <laughs> really? Yes. Uh, well, the brand is a mind starting. That's not funny, old guy. Is that funny? No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you always. It's only funny because you can't remember how old you are. <laughs> so, good point. I don't believe. Here's the thing. I, I, as, as I try not to judge anybody instantly. I don't want to start, but I think we have to start. If you're a politician, you are a narcissistic, full of yourself person that believes you can run stuff. You have to prove it to me. There's some people that are proving it to me in the D Democratic Party. I think Elizabeth Warren is is honest. I think she's uh, uh, um, uh, consistent. I think uh, in her things. There's other people that I think are, are you know the hip the hypocrisy. As you get older, you start to really hear oh, it. Yeah. You hear it really instantly. So I agree with you in that. It's like you now was before you would just believe. I believe them because they're Democrat. No. I know. I believe them because th over time they've done this. They, that's, you have to go by right. performance now. Trump, on the other hand, his performance since the day he got elected, since before he got elected, has been such that of a, of a raging fucktard that we like. How do you still follow this guy? How do you have? How you are thinking individual to still follow this guy? And this thing he said about the uh, the new congresswomen uh, is is so out of control. Go back to your own countries and fix them. Yeah, they are dickhead. That's why they ran for office. They're in the country they country they're from. Fixing it. But right. here's well, the thing when that when racism meets just 
blind stupidity. Right. Like if you, it would be bad enough if it was if it was just such a racist thing to say, which it clearly is. Right. Mitt Romney, it's fucking racist. Right. Mitt yeah. Romney. Oh, that was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and, uh, I think we both went after Mitt Romney yesterday. Jesus, didn't what we? a coward! Nutless, you coward! Nutless. nutless. I like using totally nutless. Totally nutless. Yeah. Like, dude, here's the thing about Mitt Romney: good family, takes care of his family. I mean, he's a, he's a corporate raider, so he would sell off Florida, but we don't need Florida. I'm okay with Florida. <laughs> I just bought property in Florida, though. Yeah, okay. So. We well, have an island though. Yeah, like, we, just kind of, yeah, no, we just cut it out. We just We a channel, and then I'll you be sovereign. You can come over. You can come <laughs> there you go. So he, he and and he just doesn't have the balls. He did that that one thing, that one speech he did before Trump got elected. Yeah. Like, okay, okay. Yep. But he doesn't have the balls now to just go. This guy's a racist and an idiot, and we can't have him as president. And if he did that, I don't think he understands what would happen. These guys. Does Putin have video on everybody? Yes. Good question. That you're Ray believes he has something on. He certainly has something on Trump. He certainly has something on Lindsey Graham. Definitely. Um, he's probably, I mean, yeah. I think Justin that- Amash, he doesn't. Right. Yeah. Probably not. Because um, it would seem that way. So Ray said this. Ray said this line. We've talked about this a couple times. Ray said, you, uh, not two years ago, she said, she said, listen, Putin played a long game. He's been in the KGB since he was a teenager. Yep. He's been, they've been, all these dudes have been taking trips to Russia That's for a what long they time. Do. That's how they do it. Absolutely. Right? Build intel on right. powerful people and then wait and then you use it later. But I, this is what I wanted to say is that we're all talking about what he tweeted about these women and that's what he wants us to do. And so he's not intelligent book smart, but I think he's extremely street, street smart. And what no one is yet talking about except for Rachel Maddow is that a new trial because of the Mueller investigation started this week, right. the WikiLeaks. And we now have video evidence of Julian Assange in the embassy actually running this whole campaign right. thing to interfere t- with the campaign People on behalf listen to, of Russia. <laughs> listen to this. 14 times Julian Sean met with Russians. They came to the embassy he was he was locked up in and met with him. On top of that, um b- before the uh once the Podesta uh, emails got released, they cleaned out over a hundred hard drives. This is a flat out treasonous crime and the Trump administration was it and the dude that's going on trial right now, right. this guy, he basically he was in the part of the Trump transition team who was being used. He was going to actually recommend who was going to go into the CIA. So you got this guy who, and he was being paid as a foreign agent. And so what Trump does, so that doesn't hit, doesn't dominate the news. He actually calls a, a bunch of brown women, uh, uh, basically, it's, you're, you're, you're not from our country. It's absolutely brilliant because yeah. no one is talking about it. No one, most people and don't even know about it. And he's been very adept at this many times in the last, Every especially in the last time, year. The transgender ban that he tweeted yeah. was right after. If you can go back and look at any time where you're like, he's insane. How can he do that? How can he say that on Twitter? Every <laughs> time it parallels with some crazy news thing coming out about Russian interference or something his kids were up to. I mean, it's crazy and no one is talking about it. Well, there is, there is the, the, the um, point that I think is the partner to that because and speaking of partner, much like you have a better half, my better yeah. half, Daisy. Yeah. yeah, we did um, well, didn't we? We did really well. Yeah. <laughs> Daisy said something not too long ago that I thought was just so spot on and so simple. I was, it was, he moved the goal, the disgusting goalposts yet again, said something. I can't remember. We can't keep track of the disgusting right. things that right. this president says and inflammatory and outrageous. And whatever the the one of the day was that it was pissing me off, she finally looked at me. She said, he's not talking to us. Right. He's not talking to sensible, critical, critically thinking people. Mm-mm. He's talking to the people that support him and they love this yes. shit. Just like he said yesterday. A lot of people agree with me. A lot of people love what I said. Yes. That's what we're dealing with. So when we get this outraged, we're outraged because we are at our core decent people who rage against racism and bigotry. Yeah. yeah. But when it, from, but from a political standpoint, like, we hate bully. bullies. Yeah. I'll, I'll... But from a political standpoint, I always try to remember now what Daisy said because it's very wise. She was like, He's not. He doesn't give a fuck how pissed off you get. He's not talking to you. He wants he you to get pissed it. off. It's attention. You because guys then are we, talking about. Well, it. here's what: these people are so dumb that we get mad. We do this podcast. People that do watch it, they start, uh, um, you know, writing misspelled comments, uh, and, and and they're angry, and then they're mad, and they actually, it really. I think what he what he gets is it really um, cements their opinion. Like like you, he could walk down and shoot somebody. Yeah, and they would go, "What Absolutely. did that guy do?" What did that guy? They wouldn't even. They wouldn't even think that the president shot somebody. They go, "What did that guy do?" It was how. Look, how is he that crazy that he said that and he knew that this guy banged a porn star while his wife was home with the baby, brand new baby, 
paid her off, mm -hmm. looked into a camera and said, no, I didn't. Right. And then admitted that he lied and his people will go, but that Bill Clinton. Right. I know. Obama did it too. And used no, campaign he didn't. finance. It's like, what? what but, well, the, the, just the inaugural. Look, if we could just go on the list in the inaugural, they spent $100 million on that inaugural. They had a baton twirler and they had four kids in red, white, and blue outfits singing God Bless America. Yeah. $100 million? Yeah. What? Yeah. Didn't happen. Uh, well, here's a question I have for both of you. Um, because again, this is a conversation because Daisy and I talk about this show. I love getting schooled by Richard Marx. Yes, sir? No, not getting schooled. It's a question. <laughs> I feel like one of the, you know, you and I, I think, have bonded recently over our Twitter accounts because we do take on trolls. Mm -hmm. I had. No, we took on. I, the reason you, you finally DM'd me was because I took on uh, uh, Pierce, uh, Pierce Morgan. Pierce Morgan. And yeah. I, just, I, just, I just devastated him. I actually researched him first. Like, you guys both do similar uh, yeah, things. Yeah, you do too, dude. Did you, you don't avoid trolls. You're like, what'd you say? Yeah. yeah <laughs> the problem with me is that so many people, I don't want any controversy. Okay, here's the problem. How many Germans said that in 1933? Right. See, apathy drives me crazy. Yes, if you don't care. Yeah, it's not going to So my me. friends, my friends will say to me, even Daisy sometimes, she'll go, why are you, and I'll go, because <laughs> apathy breeds more ignorance. We can't yeah. just be like whatever. Right. But here's the question that kind of circles back. And, and this is an important question. And I ha I, I, I'm going to try to answer it in my own way too, but I want to see what you guys think. If you, if you think of all the times you've taken on a troll, right. all the times you've, take, you've done this podcast, you've been on, you've done interviews and you've said what is reasoned and thoughtful opinions do you think that you've turned one single trump supporter off of trump so i get this question a lot here's what i say to that people go titus why i get this on twitter titus why do you keep doing this they're never going to change and i say i don't do it for them i know they won't but the people that are on the ragged edge that aren't quite sure those people when i actually when i actually back up everything i say mm, that's a with good information facts and the truth those people go well fucking this guy's an idiot this good didn't and, and then i'll see the dude didn't you even look this up titus right. titus put this up 10 seconds after you tweeted it right those people you, will uh, you, he and i are really quick with the copy paste by the way yeah, yeah. <laughs> totally. by the way yeah. you know what because i'm stunned how stupid you are yeah it took me three seconds to find right this. you said the most outrageous shit i've ever heard about obama and i went click click here do you do what i do when i <laughs> click, click, click. If I see CNBC, I won't, I won't copy it. If I see MSNBC, right. I, I won't copy it. If it's say. CNN, I Fox, won't copy it. I go, yeah. I, I go with, yeah, either something Time, I find on Fox or something that is week, somewhat neutral CNN, or USA right. Today. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because then you shove it down your fucking yeah. throat. Oh, uh, Shep Smith from Fox? Yeah, I love Nothing. Thank God yeah, for him. I love attached him. to it. Either yeah. one yeah, of yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, no, Even, we're fine. We're totally fine. Yeah. We're not, we're, we're, Even Neil Cavuto a couple times has taken him on about his line. And Chris Wallace sometimes. Chris Wallace has taken him on. So every once in a while, they'll be like, you know, man, what about the uranium? And I'll be like, Shep Smith. <laughs> Here's three minutes where Shep Smith basically buries it. And then, and they disappear. Or, or uh, shut the fuck up, Titus. Oh, and then I always go, that that's one for me. Yeah. yeah. I don't think that you're going to change Trump's supporters' minds. But I think that some of the people that we have spoken to are the people that are typically Republican because right. that's how they identify, right. but they are decent people. And they're thinking, I really don't like this and guy, I know a lot of those but people. I'm a Republican. Yeah. So I think that those are the people that maybe we could change their minds. That's a good answer. And I guess that's, that's kind of how I feel too, other than just the fact that I can't. I, I, I have made up my mind several times. It's just, I'm not going to even get into this anymore. I'm just going to talk privately with my friends about it. And then I'll just, it's like this addict, like I'm not an addictive person. But I'll go, I'm not looking at the mentions. I'm not even going to look at the at the responses to this tweet. I'm not going to look at it. And I'll, sometimes I'll go like three or four days and I'll be like, God, I'm just so happy. I'm just, I feel so chill and zen. I'm like, let me just check what the responses are. <laughs> <laughs> See, with me, I have a different system because I get – to me, Twitter is heckler practice. It. Right. I, I am fueled by it in a weird way. I'm like, okay, idiot. That's an idiot. I, 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 just, I basically – my job is to take down idiots. And that's how your dad talked to you. So you're very you, – it's sort of warm that's and true. snuggly that's for true. you I a little be, bit. I want to be a, 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 a – I just – like one thing argument I think expert, I you think. guys, what's good about what you do is the quote, um, all it takes for evil to triumph is for good men to do nothing and right. so you are doing something at least and how many times a day do you get told because you're in the entertainment industry that you should shut your mouth absolutely that, sh Constant. that makes me insane Constant. really you mean because i am successful at a job that only what two percent oh, yeah people make a living in that, but what right? else are they going to say 
What else? Get, yeah, can I say? Not that it makes me want to scream. Do you, and do that's you, the where they go thirteen. Good, dude, Titus, the dude has thirteen followers. I go, I didn't. I don't do it for him. Right, it's not. I exactly. don't do it for him. He's an idiot. He's never gonna. He this, You can tell he's an idiot by the shit he said. Right. I do it for everybody and the way else he spelled who it. might get oh, sucked God, into the. Why can't they spell? Yeah. They oh. the the people that that claim to care so much about preserving the integrity of this country are the people that don't know how to use the language. <laughs> the apostrophes really yeah. get them every the way, time. That's a, that's another thing about the women that spoke yesterday. They were so eloquent. They were so for they were eloquent, and they, and it's it's always weird to contrast classy. classy and to contrast what they said against what Trump says is. Is something that I always I always think like can't you just be a thinking person watch him speak watch them speak and go they seem way smarter what am I why am I listening yeah. to this guy yeah but here's another uh, interesting thing um, my wife has also had great concern um, you know she has a uh, a really successful clothing brand and a lifestyle brand um, and she's pretty outspoken too and she calls people twat she call, she's from Jersey <laughs> she's like such a twat. <laughs> um, twat. That's a good, that's a noise. Actually. Stop being such a twat. <laughs> twat. I that's go, baby. Noise. It's twat. She goes, no, it's twat. I'm from Jersey. <laughs> I like twat. Actually, um, yeah, I might, I might But it. she's um, protective of the fact that she's like, you don't understand. You do something completely different, and you're going to have people like, if you, what if you're out on tour all the time? She's mm-hmm. worried about safety, number one, but she's also just worried about mm-hmm. um, turning people off. That you know, and I. Now, here's the thing: that a lot of people who only Ha, you know, hassle me on Twitter wouldn't know is that there's not one second of my show that's political. Right. I don't allow it onto the stage because I really do feel that even though there is a platform for me, that's not what these people paid for. Right. right. And I completely keep it separate. But what's really interesting, whenever this comes out with Daisy, and she's actually starting to see it for herself now, you know, you probably do meet and greets at your shows, right? Yep. I do these meet and greets every single night. Let's say there's 50 people. At least 11 or 12 of them will say, can you sign this or blah, blah, blah. I really love it. And they'll go, and I love your Twitter. I love your Twitter account. I have yet to have one person in a meet and greet say, you know, you might want to back off the, or I don't like what you said about not one, not one single person. And I know that there are people in the audience who are Trump supporters, who are conservative, who they might look at my Twitter feed and be like, I fucking hate everything he says on Twitter. But I really love Hold On to the Nights, so here I am. And it's kind of like, that's at least reason thinking. Reason thinking and, and critical thinking. I have the same thing. I, I did a whole special. I did a special called Amerigeddon. It's on, yeah. it's on as Amazon Prime. And where I basically, you know, here's the thing. You're not lying. Like if someone could just, if you just started saying crazy shit that wasn't right. true and they could disprove it instantly, you're just an idiot. You're not. You're thinking it through. You're, you're, you're giving facts. And at one point. Um, those people that are on the cuffs, those people may have gone towards Trump. Those people may have gone the other way. Had you, and then they started. I have other people that'll back. They'll find out. And then if you had this happen, you slam a troll. Next thing you know, fifty of your people have just shit hammered. Oh, yeah. Where you're like, yeah, I'm out of this. Especially, right. especially if you quote the tweet and then you, if you, if you <laughs> yeah. drag them. Yep. It's awesome. So, uh, so I think what he's really a master at that goes along with what your wife said is he is a master at PR and sound bites. So when he comes out and, you know, the Mueller report comes out and it obviously does not exonerate him. And then he tweets and says in an interview, completely exonerated me, no collusion. And everyone's like, he never said that. What is he right, talking about? But his about? millions of people said, he's yeah, no, see, no collusion. Us, right. He's doing a little sound bite for those people. And then they mimic that. And you're, she's exactly he's right. He's Jim Jones. Yes, absolutely. And they have he's already David had the Kool-Aid. And when, yeah. when when do they finally die? That's what is this a time release Kool Aid? What is this? <laughs> What's going on? Kool Aid doesn't doesn't leave their systems. Uh, <laughs> do you think he's a racist? Me? Do you think he's a racist? Do you think Trump's a racist? Absolutely. Okay, so I went down the Armageddon update. We went down every. But wait, wait, wait. I don't just I don't think he's a racist because I think he's a racist. I think he's a racist because I can give you dozens of <laughs> right. examples going back of to things he said yeah. and done that are blatantly racist. Yeah, yeah. And I mean the one. The, even when there's a gray area, and I've had conversations with even people in my family who like, I'll go, oh my God, I can't believe I'm having this conversation. Oh, we have a family vacation coming up that I'm good. I told You're her. dreading I said, it. I said, I'm not dreading it. I'm just- I'm dreading told, that part I, of it, yeah. I told her, I said, I'm just going to get up and walk out and just go stand on the yeah, beach. Yeah, that's what I do too. I'm just going to be like, because I don't, I love them. And and whatever that's going, and I, I really, my, my aunt and my uncle, I love them. He was a Navy SEAL. She's a registered nurse. She's a sweet human. 
but they keep Fox News on all the time. They're on still. Obama's a Muslim. Right. Like he's a terrorist. And I'm like, he wasn't it, born here. He doesn't already, have a birth certificate. He's yeah. already, he left and he didn't, he wasn't he the wore, Antichrist. Plus he wore that tan suit. So. I know. It wasn't that awful. We really have standards. But what I did country. was, and this will help you out, when it comes to the racism conversation, which his followers really just do love to go, he's never said anything. Just like, you know, <laughs> I, I created, I actually took 10 minutes. And I went into QuickTime and I created a loop that I kept oh. on my phone of him saying to um, uh, um, Jake Tapper, he's a Mexican. He's a Mexican. He's a Mexican. <laughs> For the judge. Yes. <laughs> Who was born in Arizona. Right. Yeah. right. I'm building a wall. He's a Mexican. Of course he's going to rule against but me. But his delivery. Yeah. Well, he, he, he gets so Joe Pesci, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. Sometimes it's like Trump is so Joe Pesci, but it's like- <laughs> It's like a clip from some horrible racist film. He's a Mexican! <laughs> but it's the president of the United States saying it. So I just play that for people and I go, how do you perceive this as anything but racist? You know what we're going to do? Uh, uh, PZE, who is our producer, we're going to actually put together. I'm going to take that one. I'm going to take uh, and s assume some are good people. I'm going to put all the racist stuff together in one thing. And then Pocahontas. I'm going to put it out as an MP3 yeah. just for anybody to use. Yeah. Yeah. Pocahontas. He, uh, you should listen to the Armageddon update before you leave because it goes in front of this whole podcast. But he read it to me this morning. And the thing about Trump is there's so much shit that you forget. Right. And the really crazy important things, you're like, oh, God, I forgot about that. And in the Armageddon update, he goes down about 20 things. I started in 73. I go, because 73, then I, the, the, you got the Central Park Five. You got, and basically, I, I did it I did it like, and you, you know, you've seen it, because I've, but I basically did it as this, the, if you if you don't know you're a racist, are any of these, have you done any of these things? Right. <laughs> and then I just, but here, here's a question. Uh, so, so recently we had dinner with um, maybe five or six people. All Our of friend them. Kathy Griffin, by the way. You told, you, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. This yeah. is a different, yeah. but, uh, um, and that was really an interesting dinner too. But very much like that dinner, the people that we were with are full-on super liberal Democrats, lifelong. And so in the ways that we were like-minded, we were like-minded. We got in this conversation about racism. And somebody at the table, we were going through examples, and somebody at the table said, you know, and they're calling them animals. And I went... And, they, and everybody joined in. It was a pile on. Yeah, can right. you believe you called these people animals? And I went, and I just went like this. And Daisy went, seriously? And I went, no, I'm sorry. I said, you guys, yeah. you're all full of shit right now. I said, there is so much we can criticize him for and so many examples of him mm -hmm. being a racist. Right. He was talking about MS-13. Right. They are animals. Right. And, they, and people and, the, and the, the liberal media took that soundbite out and was disingenuous about that. Yep. Yeah. So fuck them for doing that because we don't need to fabricate yeah, right. anything. We, yeah, we it don't need to spin it. That's the thing. And everybody we, at the table got pissed off at me for a minute until I was like, yeah. guys, I'm sorry. You've got all these other examples yeah. are valid. Stop repeating yeah. that one. It's, yeah. it's wrong. Yeah. You're well, lying. It, again, you're absolutely right. We don't need to spin it you just got to play like you said you just got to play what he said exactly we're done um we're done do we have to we have what we got the crazy liberal left people make me insane too yeah. because it's like oh my god like come on they're the eye rolly side of it you know mm -hmm. we had dinner with some friends and they were saying well kamala harris i can't vote for her she would really have to answer for all those people those black people that she prosecuted she was a prosecutor. Uh, we were like, she was a prosecutor. That's what she did. That's uh, they committed crime. It was for proven doing her that they job? did. Yeah, she, for so the she, government. So she was really good. So so you <laughs> so you don't want any law enforcement. Right. I, they, they were bad people. She's also fighting for the people that. Did, I, 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 yeah. There's a level again. Of, there's no critical thinking. There's enough lack of critical thinking on both on sides. both sides. Right. I believe this. I believe there's ten percent. I've said this before. There's ten percent on the left and ten percent on the right that are just out of. You're never gonna change him. Right. They're out of their fucking minds. They're gonna they're gonna call everybody sis. They're gonna you know children. He doesn't have a gender. Okay, uh, right. that's gonna happen. <laughs> you know, right. I mean, just as bad on the left. And then there's the eighty percent of us in the middle that are just like, what the fuck is going on? Do you think yeah. it's eighty percent? I do. I just think, it, and I think it's if you looked at it, if it was a gradient and you were using colors, oh, it would get redder it as it, it would get blue, yeah. it get dark blue on it, and right. then the, it just gets better as it gets towards the middle. I try to be the middle, and I agree with you hundred percent. You can't, you can't bitch at the far right if you're going to be so far left. You don't yeah. make sense. Yeah, um, well, I know I too think many it of those discredits people us, it you does. know, and the liberal news doing that as well. Then they have something to point to, and it just makes us look bad. There's right. our stand doesn't sound valid anymore. Right. Um, what were you going to ask me? I was going to ask you. Uh, by the way, uh, you still got. You always get the script. You no, have the constant script. No, 
No. no? Uh, is it? Uh, is it? <laughs> He's my, trying to guess what my ads under, we is, have is, today. Uh, yeah, you know, I'm kind of comfortable. You're very comfortable. Oh, you know, you know, I'm comfortable. Do tell. I'm, well, um, do you like me undies? <laughs> I know you like me undies, don't you? You like it, Richard? Do you wear me undies? Oh, me undies? Yeah, it's a company named Me Undies. It's, I don't, but I'd like to know more about it. Right. So here it is. Uh, um, me Undies is a company, and all the underwear was made out of uh, Model fabric. Indeed. It's cool. It's the most breathable, breathable, and it hugs you. Like Daisy, oh, hugs you in all Daisy, the right we'll love it. She already you hugs know, me in all the right places. Yeah, mate. I know, right? She, likes, but she likes me undies, right? It actually, I think they claim to cuddle your boys with joy. I think is their, cuddle your yeah, boys with joy. I think right. that's well, what the problem it is. is they got a little more space here, and I need a little more space. Oh my god! What I'm saying is, <laughs> Peasy, cut, cut. <laughs> don't cut it. Peasy shaking. It was the his look head. to camera. I think that helped. Uh, they keep sending us matching things, and so this time they sent us matching pajama pants. Um, before that, they sent me a pineapple thong and pineapple booty socks, nice. and he got pineapple S socks. What are they called? What? Long boxer, boxer thingies. Boots. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Yep, those with socks, and we just run around the house in those. Sometimes uh, we have Star Wars uh, onesies, onesies yeah. that match. Aww. You know, we're but, super. Cute. But here's the thing. Here's the, so I was going with this other company for a long time, very sports oriented company, and uh, and I thought these are great. And then I got these these me undies underwear, and it's literally I was like, this old company was made out of sandpaper. What the hell is this right. made of? They are uh, and they they stay cool. Uh, they fit better than anything. She thinks I actually look sexy. I look five pounds lighter. I will say that, don't I? I kind of love them. Um, Except for you don't need to the look front of me. In great shape, man. Oh. So, <laughs> He's been hanging out with Tony Horton. Um, so, I'm hanging out with him. He makes me go to his house and he abuses me. Uh, so, the best part about are you dog people? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. officially, we're done. We're yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're rescue Daisy, adoption in. people. Okay, so You're now invited to the Prince Party next uh, April. <laughs> you can match your meundies. They now have buddy bands, and you can match your dog to Aww. your underwear, Underpants? lounge pants, onesies. Yes. Wow. I'm just saying. So, if, guys, if you want to get this, you know what to do. You get 15% off, free shipping, and 100% satisfaction guarantee. You just go to meundies.com forward slash Titus. Meundies.com forward slash Titus. Uh also by, uh, brought to you by Combustion Speedwear. If you go to the website, Combustion Speedwear, this is our this is our line of stuff. It's all kind of hot rod oriented. This is a piston on the front, but on the back of the shirt, it says, if you don't know what's on the front of the shirt, you need to slap your dad. Um, <laughs> and we have, we're uh, still not done. We have another sponsor <laughs> okay. of this podcast. So go to CombustionSpeedwear.com for leather jackets. You can order them. We'll do any size for you. Uh, and if you go right now, eh, we'll send you a shirt if you order a jacket. Before we get back to talking about Trump, also Butcher Box. Oh, these guys. Oh, Butcher Box. Yeah, have you used Box. them? It's so, so they sent us, uh, this is the best part about doing ads, they send you a whole full box of meat, which sounds disgusting. But I want Butcher Box to incorporate the Impossible Foods burger. Into they, I they, think they do. I'm think vegan, they, so. I just saw, no, I, they're not. Weren't you stunned at the Impossible? Weren't you in, stunned by when the first time you had an Impossible burger? Oh, yeah. They are Impossible. Like, you, which is weird because it may go, I must be a real pure carnivore because this is awesome. Well, I mean, and, and the, 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 the people that hate vegans, like Piers Morgan, they're like, well, why would you want something that tastes like, it's like, dude, I, it's not about the taste of right. meat, you moron. Right. Yeah. It's just about a decision I made to not consume animal products. Right. It doesn't mean I don't like the taste of like meat, right? Well, I'll tell you this. So these guys do it. These guys Actually, do it. we were vegan. I was fully vegan up until we got our first, first butcher box. And here's why. Uh, and you went back to the dark it's side. It's like the gateway, <laughs> you know? It is, I understand. It's really bad. You know, the weird thing, I've never met the chickens. That's, I think, that it would be different if, I, if, I, if I met the chickens. It does help. I'm telling you, it, it's not, this is not going away. It's just, an, it's an exploding movement. Yeah. Excuse the expression. <laughs> um, that, I've had those. That, yeah, we've all had those. Um, and- Butcher Box needs to get on board. So and it would, they would have a lot. They would have. It would just so then enhance they could get everybody. Business. Okay, yeah. so currently that's you. A, by can the way, that's get, a, that's a valid point. But right now, the what thing you, that I do love about them is that their beef is grass fed. They have organic chicken. Um, they have wild caught no, Alaskan salmon. No hormones. Right. Yeah, it's um, pretty bad. And the chicken is like it's like I, I didn't realize what real chicken was supposed to taste like because you get it with it's injected with stuff. Oh yeah. And then we had butcher and it's so dense. She was she cooked up some chicken. It was just it was just awesome. But we uh we love butcher box and uh and 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 we every time we get a box it seems to last forever. It's awesome. And you guys you can go customize it however you want it. You can do all 
whatever. You can do all one thing. Um, all you have to do is go to butcherbox.com forward slash Titus or enter promo code Titus. You get 20 bucks off your first box and a package of free bacon in every box for the life of your subscription. Go to butcherbox.com <laughs> forward Lifetime slash bacon. Titus. God. Go now, limited time offer. It changes. So, uh, I want to talk about a couple of things. You have a new single out. I want yeah. to talk about it because we were listening to it this morning. It's awesome. Thank it you. is um, awesome. And, uh, and it's weird because... Uh, you know, you were uh, you, you you had your peak and you kept going. You know, I, I and that's what I like to comment. I'm on my ninth special. I know I, you know, I had my TV show was 20 years ago. I don't yeah. give a shit. I, right. I you know I, my creativity is still yeah, my we creativity. Yeah, just keep going. Right. This single, um, name of it again. Another one down. Uh, yeah, it, it, it says uh, it's just another one down. This is for uh, it is. You guys got to go to go go uh, go to iTunes or wherever and get uh, another one down. And I want to hear the story about this because you you told us before we started that your son. So you've actually turned your your sons are like musicians. All three of them, yeah. Wow, so, wow. Yeah, they're and they're all in different genres of music. So my oldest son Brandon um, is has been and is really into DJing, um, more into the hip hop world, right? But always with super killer melodies. And he's got even his brothers would agree that he's got one of the greatest singing voices you'll ever hear in your life. He doesn't sing that much because he's really into the DJing and production and stuff like that. But when he sings, man, it's just like unbelievable. Um, that's Lucas, you saying it. And that's you saying oh, it. Oh, well, the, I mean, all nepotism hit. aside, he is a, they're all three incredible singers, but Brandon's voice is just sublime. Um, Lucas, my middle son, um, has really kind of followed the, the kind of straight ahead pop R&B. He's, everything he writes sounds like it could be on the radio tomorrow. Um and then my my youngest son Jesse's into heavy rock and roll, so right. he's he's uh, he's put out, he's putting out this EP that's just amazing. He played all the guitars and it's pretty aggressive. So um, it is hot in here, right? Yes. Yeah. So I went to Lucas because I thought everything he's playing me is blowing my mind, and I said, "Can we try to write something for me?" And we wrote the song in like an hour, and he produced it and. It, it, the record company BMG heard it and they were like, "We think that that should be your first single." So yeah, go another one down. Uh, is it out notes. now? Can can they? Is that it's how out, we got oh, it? It's I got, out yes, now. I got that. I get the single out. And we're yesterday. going to radio in a couple of weeks with it. Um, I got I got it yesterday. I and have the to full say, album October. October. Right? I have to say something about this song. There's notes you hit it like you know you, you know you, you, yeah. You, you're not four years old when you did your first no, tour anymore. No. And then there's notes you hit in that song. I was just like, holy shit! Like it didn't go away. Well, part of that is um, keep training. Yeah, it's, it's not I that sing. hot. You're wearing a hoodie. It's hot. No, I, yeah, it's we hot. have the ACs going. I'm like you having wanna... an Albert Brooks moment. <laughs> Seriously, like it got hot all of a sudden. Um, well, it's it's use it or lose it. You know, it's like yeah. Tony Bennett's 91 and he still sings his ass off because he sings you know at least 10 shows a month. Right. And I'm always on the road. I'm always singing. So my voice has not. I haven't had any trouble with my voice really. Yeah. Did you ever come off the road or have you been out? Oh yeah, I've had breaks, but now it's like I don't tour so much anymore. Yeah. I just do shows all the time. That's what people, me, right. Brian Adams, Kenny Loggins, yeah. we go out and we do shows. That's really yeah. the, the the crux of our careers. Right. And we drop albums periodically, right. but it's really about touring and performing. I have a question. Since all your kids have these different genres, have you ever thought of, I'm sure you have thought of getting them all together? Oh yeah, I've tried. And, uh, and The closest I've come is that for years we would do a... Um, a Christmas song, but even produce for you, even like like because if you one kid's into rock, other kids into hip hop, yeah, like the album that you could put out would be yes. like what the what, and that's in the works because I've actually started to work on a track with my oldest son. It's a very kind of electronic kind of vibe, um, and I've written a pretty cool heavy rock song with Jesse. So eventually those will get finished. I say I like the ballads, but man, I like when you I like when you crank it. Yeah, yeah, I really do like it because you have that voice. You have that voice that can go to all those places. Yeah, thanks. And I, I like when you really. Crank well, it. I have this sort of uh, rock EP waiting to, waiting for the right moment to put it out, and it's. I think it'll be surprising for the people that no go. No time like He's the present. No time like the present, my friend. Uh, most importantly, <laughs> as a matter of so fact, that we can gauge since we're friends now. I would love to hear that. I won't let anybody. Hear I'll, it. I'll sneak you some some MP3s. Okay. Oh right, I won't let anybody hear it. But I will. I will. I, I wrote will. a song with uh, a guy named Matt Scannell, who's my best friend in the world. He's right. the lead singer of a band called Vertical Horizon, and they, the Vertical Horizon, uh, cut it. But I just did a new version of it as well. I'll send you that too, and it's a pretty heavy rock song. Well, I'm a huge. I'm, I'm a Monster Prince fan, and only because he went. He went. 
everywhere. Yeah. And and I always think one like, of the greatest rock guitarists ever. Oh yeah. Dude, yeah we were. I just played for the Peasy. Hall Peasy. of Fame clip. Yeah. So I think that's my favorite With live Petty. guitar solo ever. Oh, Peasy man. didn't know, and I sat down Peasy, and I guess I go, dude, watch, we'll just watch this. Because he plays. The I best play little, is he when he little. throws the guitar at the end and, and it, walks off, but it doesn't, doesn't come, come down. down. Right. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> He's awesome. He also is magical. We and do I, a Prince party every year yeah. on the anniversary of his death, and we convert this whole place into a oh, nightclub. Purple velvet you walls. And Daisy, oh yeah. Will you dance? Daisy danced with Prince once. No. Oh my gosh! Wow. At Paisley Park, there was a big. She was on MTV still, and she tells the story. And she said we all got invited. Uh, it was like a hundred, you know, executives and hosts and celebrities and stuff, and they all ended up at Paisley Park uh, for this after show thing. And everybody was up and dancing, and Prince wasn't even really visible. Right. Yeah. And all of a sudden, she turns up, she's dancing with some, she's like in a group with friends, and she turns around, and Prince just comes up to her and starts dancing with her. He appears. He just, he, when we saw him at the Roosevelt and those he tiny that. shows that he did. Oh, yeah. He just, he turned around to explain to me how it was about to break well, off. She, wasn't, you, she was, she was a more of a Purple Rain me. Prince fan. And yeah. she, she knew Pussy Control and a couple things. I was like everything. And I, and, and the lights, we've told this story before. The lights, the lights start to change. And I go, I, and I turn around. I go, and she's sitting on a couch at the Roosevelt. I go, it's about to get weird. And she goes. I was trying to talk while well, Prince was starting the show. He just appeared. He and manifested he right behind wow. me. And he was getting a laugh because he was, I'm he was looking him up and down up, like, like this. Right. And they laughed. And then he, and I'll say it again. I've, I, I'll never, I looked, oh my God. And he, and he saw me, looked me, and then he jumped. Floated. I floated. He floated, he floated. up on the edge of he a flew. couch like a Levitated. cat. Levitated. And then danced on the back of a couch. It In high heels. It was the craziest heels. shit I've ever seen. Uh, so here's like, my Prince story. Oh, I have a great story. <laughs> I'm so excited. So I'm recording an album. This this would have been like 97, 98. Right. And I'm at this place called The Record Plant in Hollywood. Yep. Pretty famous rec uh, recording studio. Yep. Next to me is Babyface making a record. And another down the hall is Luther Vandross, who I'm great friends with. And we've been writing together. And so the, the three what of us are- What was that little song you and Luther Vandross did? We was wrote it? Dance With My Father. Dude. We wrote a couple other songs together, but we wrote Dance With My Father. Dance With My Father. Before we get to Mr. It's Ray. the last song he ever wrote. Okay, so that song, yeah. first of all, that song, say what you will. You can be, you can be the toughest human being on the planet. Yeah, man, it'll crush as a man, you. It'll yeah. crush you. Like Nazis, yeah. it breaks them in half. <laughs> Like you could be, you could be in Charlottesville. If they'd have just played there in Charlottesville, it would have been over. They just been, this is all go home. Go Maybe I need ball. to go to Maybe the White House and play do. dance with my father oh, for Donald man. Trump. Oh man, that would it would change. It would change the country for God's sake. Or, sakes, or he would be going. It doesn't have a beat. I don't like it. <laughs> um, so yeah, Luther was just the best. I could go on and on about him. But so he was in the you know down the hall doing an album. We so all the three of us are working on these projects, and we're we're all in there for like two or three weeks, block booked, right? And like the second week of recording, um, I come into the studio one morning and my engineer says, did you hear the thing about Prince? And I went, what? And he said, they came into our, all our rooms and said, Prince is starting a week of recording here uh, in the fourth room, in the little production room at, at the back. And we were all told, if you see him, don't approach him, don't look at him. And I went, wait, they said, what? Uh... Right. And I went, and I go to the studio manager. I said, "So I, I missed the uh, announcement. You want?" And she said, "Oh no, no, it's just the princess kind." And we don't. And I said, "You're gonna fucking tell me and Luther Vandross and Luther or Ray, anybody right. to not yeah, any human." And they were, "Look, this is just what was passed on to us." And I was like, "You know what? This is fucking bullshit." So I'm like, "I hope I see this motherfucker." <laughs> <I'm gonna go laughs> well, you well, are the show, same man. people. We, she's right. We can't hang oh out. God. So I was like, I was, and so like Monday came and went. I didn't see him. Tuesday came and went. I didn't. See, and every time I come in, I'd be looking around like I want to just break that rule. Like, like who the fuck do you think you are, right? So like almost towards <laughs> the end of the week, I'm gonna duck out to go to lunch, right? And I'm standing in the doorway of the. Stu of the of the building and the secretary the studio secretary says oh richard um did you get the message that so and so called and, and left him and i said oh okay thanks i'll call him back and i turn and as i'm about to walk outside a big purple rolls royce pulls up perfect his old what was his old bodyguard's like name keep it low key I like yeah, that. Very tonight subtle. we looked at him. He subtle. wants to keep it really low key. He, he Don't liked look it. at me and you know, you'll barely notice me anyway. I, I always just say, I like to emphasize the living shit out of the subtlety. <laughs> right. <laughs> out comes, I forget his bodyguard's name, that was just gigantic guy that he was always with. Gets out of the car and I'm like, and I just, there's a drum roll in my head. Prince gets out of the car and he starts to walk towards the door. And I'm like, 
here it fucking comes. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, my, I'm like so ready. And he looks up and he sees me. He goes, Richard, hey man. He goes, oh, I've always, I'm such a fan of your songwriting. And I was like, hey man. Uh, you, he broke <laughs> he you. totally broke me. <laughs> and he was so charming and so nice. And, and then I would thought, you know what? It's man, yeah, maybe, maybe he puts that out there. And maybe it's just his people that do yeah. that shit. Because I've been misrepresented. It's always people's people. Yeah. But he could always. not have been. I and mean, yes, plus he was complimenting me. So like that's just my own narcissism. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, no, Prince is so cool. <laughs> Prince wouldn't know. You have, you have, no, Prince wouldn't just compliment no, you. But, he, but when he said, he goes, man, I'm such a fan of your songwriting. You've written so many songs I really admire and respect. And I was like, dude, my head is spinning around right now. Yeah. So we stood there for like a couple minutes and talked. And then I was like, and when I came back from lunch, I went into my, into my studio and I told my engineer, I was like, Prince is a pretty cool guy. Yeah, <laughs> super nice. Love that guy. Super nice. That's super nice the, guy. the theater in Minneapolis that we work in, the Pantages, they said that they always knew it was him because someone would call and buy 50 tickets, very subtle, um, 50 right. tickets in one block. And they said that the show would start, it was always Chappelle because he was friends with him. Right. And then about 20 minutes in, 50 people would walk in in a group and not separate, go down the hall, go upstairs. And he was always in the very center of that very not at all obvious group of 50 people yeah. and that's how they knew well what? i didn't know him at all but i still i i hate the fact that that human being is no is no no longer on the planet to create music yeah that breaks my yeah. heart yeah me too bowie I mean, same thing michael jackson bowie you gotta admit though man bowie went out badass bowie went out <sighs> bowie went at that last time we were just listening we were just in black star we were just listening to it and and Bowie went out like, yeah, yeah, I know, I'm going, and uh, right. so what? So I'm going to do the greatest thing. Well, I've so ever I'm going right. yeah, to do the most inventive album I've ever done. And then, by the way, I've got in my wheel. It releases on my death. Yeah, <laughs> and the video. Did you see the video? Yes, it, 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 oh, the God. video was unnerving to it me. It was. It was it, like, yeah, I felt it was great, but it was unnerving. It was I was like, oh, I like, I wanted to call. Hey, 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 hey Tool, you should watch this Bowie video because <laughs> they really pushed the envelope on this. Um, uh, so here's the thing about what you just said, and this is what I've learned. Um, I, I my first gig ever, w a big gig before I got the login store was Gloria. Uh, not she did this on Gloria. Um, Gloria, Lord Brannigan. So Lord Brannigan, and I'm like a kid. I'm like 19 or 20, and I'm I'm like I'm freaking out because I'm getting this gig early. I, I'm, I was one of these guys. I, I was like you say, think big. Yeah. So I my my manager calls like, hey, could, could you do like a 6,000 seat venue? Sure. No idea. Right. I, the biggest room I played was an open mic. I'm hell yeah. And I see goes, all right, you got the gig. Bill Graham's people said you can have the gig. And I'm like, oh shit. Wow. So I show up and everybody was a dick. And I said, could I just meet her? And the manager was like, oh, you know, she's busy and she's getting ready and blah, blah. And I said, oh, I'm sorry. And uh, and then he goes, hold on, let me talk to her. And he comes back, he goes, yeah, you can meet her. I go in. She's by far the nicest of person of everybody around of her. Course. And she was great. She's like, she gave me a hug. She's like, she's like, go out there, man. Hope you have fun. Because I was obviously, hey, I was Elmo. I was Elmo going out <laughs> for the first time. Who were you not allowed to look in the eye? Uh, oh, uh, um, uh, the guy, it? the balding guy Michael who's married Bolton? to Michael Bolton. I, Michael Bolton, I did really? a gig with Michael Bolton and I was told, uh, Nicole, Nicolette Sheridan was there and I opened for, they called me at the last minute. I was in, uh, North Carolina and they said, you got to drive. So we drove an hour and I took a buddy with mine. They just let him do five. It was weird. This big thing. And, yeah. and he did five and then I did 20 minutes and, uh, they said, don't look, I didn't even give a talk to him. I'd known him a long time and I've heard these stories and it's just so perplexing because I just, I, the guy that I know is just like, I, I could imagine him sitting here looking at you going, what? He, they told you what? I know. Because I've never known him to be anything but just funny and sweet and like we- He we was on John so, Oliver's show. He was awesome. I'd be man. really surprised if that really came from him. I don't think it does. And I, mean, I think the Prince thing proves it. Uh, the Lord Browning thing proves it. We don't have any, again, again, whereas we don't have any, any evidence Trump can read- we don't have we don't have any evidence. No, that we have evidence these people that he can't. Assholes. When that tele uh, teleprompter went right. out, oh, we that was awesome. are all very clear. That was awesome. The airports of the Revolutionary history. War. Oh god, that was awesome. <laughs> that was awesome. How about that? What a great moment! What a great opportunity the next day to go. I had a senior moment. I just read like and it was. Funny. I was reading the prompter, and I okay, you got me. You got yeah. me on this or one. Or crack off two jokes Make about a joke, it. Yeah. Be like, so I was at the airport. Uh, so when to Paul Revere that, went to the airport, right? You know, then you just go. Oh, to be oh, okay. that small, to be that insecure, to be that thin-skinned is just. By the way, that's the word small. I think that is probably the most uh, in the biggest insult you can give him, dude. 
bro. You're Talk small. to Stormy Daniels, dude. You're small. <laughs> yeah, mushroom. <laughs> and then and then gave what shape it was. Yes. Uh, you've written a lot of ballads, a lot of love songs. Uh, how often did women throw their underwear on stage? Constantly. Is and that it a still thing? happens. It's a thing. But now it depends. I it's was a lot bigger say, They get bigger, don't they? As <laughs> years. So I work at the Salvation Army every week on Mondays, and my captain there, she's not from here. She's um, from uh, Honduras and doesn't speak English very well. And a lot of times I think that maybe we, we're not always saying the same thing. Right. Yesterday, she asked who was going to be on today, and I said you, and she, her eyes lit up, so apparently you're universal, and she put on Right Here Waiting mm-hmm. and got tears in her eyes uh, about you. It's not that bad. It, <laughs> no, but your hair was even more... She showed me, and I was like, wow. Oh, his hair. Your hair game, bro, I don't think there's anybody's even played your... your since Elvis, no one's just played your hair game. No, Stamos. Stamos, Stamos, but no. yeah, Stamos well, can't yeah. sing though that well. True, can he? I remind him. He of can that play all the drums. The he can play the drums. Uh, he's a good dude. I he's ran into him a couple times. He's, he's a very nice dude. man. Really. Tony um, Horton. But has you guys really hanging out together must be weird. Game. It's like it's like you guys are really close, man. That's. The, yeah. I'll tell you what's funny. <laughs> we haven't hung. We haven't hung out that much. Right. But we know each other a little bit, and I, I, I'm, and I, I, I would not tell you this unless he had already sort of publicly mentioned it at one point. But when his son was born. I wanted to be, I don't know why, because I'm not even that close to Samos, but I like him. And I also saw the trajectory of his life and how he wanted to have a child so badly. And then he had a boy and he named him after his dad. He was really, he and I have talked about our dads. We were both really close to our dads. We lost our dads young. And so I, I, I said to Daisy, I said, I want to send, his name is Billy. I want Billy's first toy piano to come from me. So I got a toy piano and I put his name on the top and the whole thing and Stamos flipped out he's tweeted videos of Billy playing his piano stuff so one night we went out to dinner at a place uh, I won't say in in Hollywood and it was just me and him and it's a place where the maitre d was very sweet but like the ultimate star fucker like every remote celebrity that would mm-hmm. come in, like anybody that was made one appearance on the bachelorette three years ago <laughs> right. he knew their name and their right. whole wikipedia page and would just be fawning all over them and this guy was just a basket case around celebrities anyway and so every time i would come in there he, it was like a, such an ego because he would and i think he was from eastern europe so he was oh are you sure he was, oh, oh he was just so, so handsome he was, and he was he, he was like right out of central casting in like right, some right. old bogart movie or something he was Peter Lorre, basically. The, you know. <laughs> so I walk it's so in. So good there. to see you, Richard. Yeah, Mark. totally. <laughs> you awesome. reminded me yeah, of him. Don't mean nothing. He's my favorite. favorite song. <laughs> so Stamos and I go to this place. We walk in, and the guy sees us. And his opening, he looks at John. And he looks at me. and He goes, "I can't handle this." <laughs> <laughs> that's oh, God, awesome that's funny. But yeah, right. Stamos I, is a good guy I have one more story I want to hear so I'm on uh, besides by Hazard by the way Hazard being called a murder ballad which was yeah. made me laugh really hard I, uh, uh, yeah, I researched a guest a little bit murder sing, ballad I'm sorry sing Hazard for me I, I can't I, don't know I was playing it yesterday no, no, I just... swear I left her by the river you didn't want to hear him I left her by the river song. which by the way well, no, I, no, no. See, Hazard by the way Hazard so I jumped in Hazard there. is like uh, basically it's like Stan uh, from Eminem, Correct. except done. It, it literally is. It's the it proper. Is, it's By the way, though, you did a great job, but you sound just like the guy that yeah, sang that. Yeah, this thing. He's really awesome. Weird. Do a um, so, uh, murder ballad. I just thought it was really funny. Um, yeah. Uh, by the way, go to, go to uh, iTunes and uh, go get Richard's music. It's, well, it's what's awesome. the background you know, the of that song? Some of your songs. Some of your songs are these songs that we're so used to hearing. Like they absorb into your brain. They're like part of the Zeitgeist. They really are, man. You like like all the weddings and 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 oh god, this just any my event. fourth grade Valentine's dance. I remember dancing like this because they were all that. She tall was this tall in fourth grade. To um, right here waiting. I I just remember that moment. It I was... married when I married Daisy. We're coming up on our four year anniversary, and her sister oh. Rosanna got ordained. We got married in Aspen, so her sister Rosanna, who I just adore got ordained and she married us in this little house in Aspen. And when I, when Daisy and I really kind of got serious and I got to know Rosanna, I think it was like the second dinner. She went, I feel like even though we've only met a couple of times, you need to know that Hold On To The Nights was my prom song. And so she still has a picture of 
the little plat like thing that they had for prom and it's Richard Marks holding on to that. So I was a part of her life in a really yeah. weird way. Yeah. You know, decades before I married her sister. So yeah. tell the murder ballad. I'm oh, so well, to know. Hazard is this song. I, I woke up in the middle of the night with the music in my head. I knew that it was there was something about the music that was haunting and, and different than anything I'd ever written before. And I wanted to write something that was unlike any other song I'd ever written. And I've always been a mystery novel fan, a murder mystery movie fan. So I thought, how badass would it be if I could write a murder mystery? Yeah. And I created these characters. And I I worked on this song for weeks. And the more I worked on it, honestly, the bigger a piece of shit I thought it was becoming. Yeah. And I really second-guessed it. and then, But I really did love the concept of it. I loved the music of it. I, I loved what I did to produce it. So I just thought, I'm just going to put it on the album third album which blew up and, and did well anyway yeah. but then when they put that song out the song went to number one like around the world like in 14 different countries wow. i couldn't believe the success of it and i still do it live in my show and I, what i say in my show which is absolutely true for 30 years now you wouldn't believe the number of people that have come up to me to my face and asked me is that song autobiographical <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I started to go, no, yeah, no, I totally killed this chick in Nebraska <laughs> yeah, exactly. years ago. But I'm famous. And I wrote a song about it. Yes, and I'm, I'm now going to admit it to away you, with. a complete Sta stranger. I think the statute of limitations is like, like <laughs> yeah, I waited. No, I'm, I'm talking about like a hundred people <laughs> wow. have asked me if, the, uh, is that song wow. autobiographical? <laughs> uh, they all sound exactly like that. But also, that. man, like, so as, uh, like, again, we've only we talked on Twitter and stuff, and, and I will say, meeting you, uh, I really get like, it, you can always tell good people and how they were raised. And I could tell that you were raised really well. And there was an incident I was reading about on Wikipedia that I want to hear about. Uh, I'm like, hey, look, we could all hear your stories about writing the songs and Kenny Loggins that you've told us. Nobody gives a shit. I want to hear the story. We do, because we want to know. Yeah. And I, I have one question about songwriting. Do you write the music first? The music come first or the lyrics come first? Or music, music almost always comes first. Yeah. And then you add to it. Then you decide I, the what it's about. music tells me what the lyrics should be. Yeah, you did just say that. That's interesting. Yeah, I mean, it's very, very rare. Um, I just had, talk about name dropping. I, I've had this incredible um, gift in the last year or so. I've I've been writing songs with Burt Backrack. Wow. And he's a lifelong hero of mine. And so when, and I, I was one of those things where I was like, I'm going to write a fucking song with Burt Backrack. I'm wow. going to make it happen. And within a year, he was like, come on over to the house. But you right are the before, secret. You are the secret. You I are am. The human I embodiment of the shit. secret. Totally. <laughs> um, and right before, like the day before uh, our writing session, where I thought we would get together, we would sit at the piano, we would like, like I, when I do co-write with other people, it's usually that. It's right. just a collaborative give and take of ideas. He was like, uh, by the way, you know, you have a lyric, right? And I went, he goes, I write music to lyrics. Uh, and I went, I thought we would just, he was like, yeah, no. And I, and, <laughs> I, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm burnt back. back. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I was like, shit. So I... Oh, okay. And I and I, I went completely out of my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, I'm just going to write. So I ended up, of course, writing sort of a poem about my relationship with Daisy and how, um, it, like anybody that, yeah, you guys can relate to this too. When you yeah. meet the one kind of later on. Mm -hmm. We call it the white tiger. You're white tiger. Yeah. You start to, as grateful as I am and we are about it, we do talk about the like. Oh God, we there's all those years that we missed. Yeah. And so this song is sort of about that. And so I just left it with him for a day and he wrote the most gorgeous music to it. So that's the way I write with him. So I, I write in reverse when I'm writing with Burt Backrack, but otherwise I write that was just an excuse for me to kind of say I'm drop. writing. Yeah, Burt yeah, drop. Yeah, drop, look, drop. We, we'll put we all put a we'll put a voice over just name yeah. drop. And then, we, and then we did we probably put. But get back to you, we're gonna ask me another question. Uh okay, so there was a there's a there was a Korean Air incident. There was an incident of Korean War where you basically uh restrained a passenger I with didn't... rope. Yeah, we heard we heard there was some gunplay and yeah. like, you were Jason Staten. What happened? I I pulled the pin and I just held it until <laughs> yeah. we got down. You hey, you sit down in your seat and you strap in. First of all, it wasn't just me. It right. was me and it was because I didn't really know. Once I was so what happened? getting involved. Okay. I, I played a show in uh, Hanoi. Right. Which was amazing. I'm with my wife, Daisy, and we're flying back. It was the end of a Southeast Asian tour. The last show was in Hanoi. Um and we had to fly through Seoul to get home. 
on our flight from Hanoi to Seoul, we're sitting, the first class was like three rows on each side, right? The guy across from us in the other opposite Daisy, Daisy's window here, this guy in the window here, right. is sitting next to an older guy. It becomes apparent that they're not together. And this guy's loud and he's Korean and he's speaking in Korean. So I don't know what he's saying. But he's just, I, I was like, oh, he's drunk. Right, you can, for hear, sure. you can hear the white trash through any race. Right, yeah. he's right. just a total fucking asshole. And people are like turning around because he's just being obnoxious and loud. And this guy next to him is just trying to ignore him, right. you know. And all of a sudden, so Daisy and I are talking and we hear a sound that sounds like this. And we turn and this guy, the guy next to him looks at him and gets up. This guy slapped this guy in the face. The guy, the window seat guy. Yeah. Oh, oh no. So the, the the older guy gets up and he, and he's not going to fight the guy but he gets up like what the fuck? Right. And everybody's like and now it's like the whole cabin is going what's happening? Now Daisy and I are the only Americans in on the plane practically. Uh -oh. Maybe we're certainly the only Americans in first class and the crew is com all Korean girls. And, are they being and when I say polite? girls I don't mean yeah. women. I mean they're really yeah, like they're yeah. young girls like they're early 20s. Right. So now there's this commotion and this guy in the window seat is still, he's like laughing at the guy and he's just an asshole and he's drunk or high or both, right? So the guy goes up to complain and there and there's no place else for the guy to sit. So he's just sort of standing at the galley. This motherfucker gets up and I'm thinking, okay, maybe he's going to go up and apologize or maybe he's going <laughs> to, he goes up. And some words start happening with the female flight crew and, and this guy's yelling at them. And the one uh, flight attendant turns and closes the curtain to the galley because she sees it's going to be a scene, which is the wrong thing to do. Because exactly. now we're like, we need to see what's right. happening. Right. right. We need to help. Right. And I immediately get up. Yes. I start to get up. No, wait. <laughs> and my wife grabs me. She goes, what the fuck are you doing? And I said, Daisy, like, we got to, what, like, what's going right. on with this yeah. guy? Right. She said, what are you going to do? I said, I don't know. But like, I don't know what's happening. Right. You're going to put a barrier between an asshole and the real world. That's what you're about to right. do. Right. It may not go well, but you've accepted that something, if, if you get hurt, you're usually going to stop it. So I go up and I pull open the curtains. And now this guy is yelling. And 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 the the guy that he slapped, it's the guy's like acting completely psycho, and it's all in Korean. So I don't know whether he's saying I'm going to bring the plane down. Right. I don't know whether he's right. saying you need to help me because I'm sick, or I don't know what's happening. Right. But he's really aggressive and really nasty, and I'm like, and I'm looking at this guy, and he looks at me, and I'm like, dude, you need to chill out. And I'm thinking he's just hearing, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and I turn. To the, there's two guys right next to me that are in the front row. Right. And I turn to them because they're Korean. And I'm like, can you fucking help right. out here? Right, right. And th the three of us now get up. And as these two guys stand up, that motherfucker shoves the female flight attendant. Oh. Oh, no. And I don't really remember. It was kind of a blur <laughs> after By that. By the way, this is good court testimony. I don't really remember. I, really I went don't. crazy. I just, it was rage. It was yeah. just, I just kind of went, you just, gra you just grab. Yeah, yeah. Because he's not going to hit her again. He's right. not going to shove anybody else. And so I and these two, next thing I know, all three of us have got him like in a lock and we're pulling him back to his seat and he's thrashing around. My wife immediately starts documenting because, I mean, just out of, for legal reasons. Hey, that's exactly. always my role in awesome. his altercations too. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. she's going, you see this guy's like losing his shit, right? Yeah. right. So there's, the pictures are, you know, at this point, the, the two guys that were absolutely 100% right there with me are not in frame. And I've got my <laughs> arm around the guy's throat practically or something. <laughs> this is awesome. So we we tie. And now the flight attendants, they have, a, they have a stun gun, which they don't know how to use. And she's like fumbling for the, the – like there's a clip for a taser. I didn't yeah, realize that. Right. She's like fumbling. I was like, just just put it down. Just because I'm not going to get fucking tased by accident. Right, exactly. Just put it down. We're going to so Or we, give it to me and I'll tase this. I, I don't know how to tase. All right. Well. I write songs. Yeah. So we- uh, Yeah, but I would try. We, yeah. <laughs> I'd give it a shot. <laughs> I would end up, I would end up electrocuted. Yeah, myself. I know. <laughs> Richard, flip, flip. So we, we ended up um, tying him up to his seat and he- Oh, that's he what spit you're doing. in somebody's face. Trying that was somebody w went over to try and tighten his ropes. I got in front of him and he spit in their face. And that's when I got up and started to go after him again. I was ready to just to beat the shit out of this At guy. At that point, you get some tape. 
And you just taped his mouth. Sorry. Yeah, there wasn't. Yeah. yeah. So we we did restrain him. Cops came on. Turns out that they questioned him and right. let him go because it turns out his father is some big dignitary in Seoul, Korea. Oh. So he got. Oh. I love this because you can go online and look oh, at pictures, pictures of it. But she's holding the stun gun out. People are videoing, and this dude has obviously been asleep. <laughs> He's got never it. took his headphones off. <laughs> He's just. <laughs> Thank God I asked the other side. Of the We're gonna. We'll put all. this on the podcast. There's a dude sitting there. Look at you, man. Let me see his face. Let me see his rage face. Oh, you're not. You weren't playing, bro. There's his rage face. Oh, we shit, need to blow dude. this picture. I got it. And, and again, look at his hair game. He's in a tussle, and his hair. My hair did look pretty good. There it is. It did look pretty good. Yeah, dude. But, that, but that, that's that, by the way, good job, man. Look, that's awesome. And it, just trust me on this. When I have talked about this, it that was such an unfortunate, scary. Yeah, yeah. Like I don't look back on that. Like that was like I, right. I look back and I go, I'm just glad that that guy didn't have a bomb. Or yeah. just so you know, I'm not saying that you're a badass. I'm saying that in this world right now. We are living in a country that people don't want to get people involved. People do what that other guy was doing. They people, just put the, yeah, yeah, keep people their headphones their head, on. People have, keep their headphones on and they actually put their head down and they just look over. Oh, I just, I, like they're watching a reality show. The This real world is not a reality show. And sometimes you got to get involved, people, yeah. so we can make it better. I mean, I'm, I'm really not, I've never been in a fight as an adult. I've come really close several times. But I've never been, I, I've never thrown a punch or received a punch as a man. Um. So I'm not, and I think that, you know, I think it's kind of like barbaric, but I also know that sometimes there, that's all that's, that's going to happen. Right. Yeah, right. That's right. all that's left. Yeah. He well, hasn't been in a fight, but he has subdued several people throughout our relationship. Yeah. I would call it you subdued. There was, we were in Florida after a show and a nasty fat guy in true religion jeans who had a lot of money, so they were letting him do whatever he wanted in the nightclub, and he was dating this young Japanese girl. She had a ponytail. She walked out of the bathroom. He came up behind her, yanked her by her ponytail, and threw her on the ground. You subdued him well, until okay, the cops subdued you. but there's nothing you. else to do but right. act. Nobody, yeah. his bodyguard uh, friend Wait, helped, okay. yeah. but the two of them, we jumped on the guy. no we, one we, else got up. It's weird because if you're, if you, by the way, just again, what a good person you are. It, it's not even like a, what should I do here? No. Yeah. Someone, someone yanks it's someone instinct. smaller, a smaller and starts bullying him. Yeah. I'm up. Yep. I'm like, no dude, I'm yep. a bigger bully than you. Yeah. I'm way, be and I'm better at it. <laughs> well, and also the anger that we have against those people makes yeah. us that much more powerful than they are. <laughs> yes. Because yeah. yeah. if I'm going to get to the point where I'm ready to fight if I have to, I'm so angry that I wouldn't fight me. Right. Exactly. Yes. I know what rage lives inside of me yes. when I get like that. And I would not want uh, that unleashed We're on me. angry enough to deal with the damage we're about to get caused. We're gonna, not, not going to cause, but I'm okay with, I'm okay. Uh, I'm going to get in your way now. Right. And I may get fucked up, but I'm going to get in your way now. Right. Right. That's, but that's, that's what you got to do. Somebody. So uh, we do a segment now. We're going to do it. Uh, and now from sea to shining sea, continent to continent and sometimes space. Oh. It's Bombshell Ray bringing you the bombshell news. Oh, let's start with this. <laughs> Um, that I just pulled this up because of what you we were talking Richard about. This. Have you seen, seen the video of the guy on the plane? So someone's yeah, you tweeted it. Uh, so... As soon as I saw, first of all, I can't stand to look at men's feet. <laughs> Me it's just, either. It's just gross, especially oh. especially in a public setting. Like, do you want to describe it? Right? Kind of a Let fucking it animal. I think Peasy no, can put the. Video. I would have got can up you... on the plane. I would have been done what you did with the angry Japanese guy, hey, dude. Dude, I have to, I might have to sit in that seat three weeks from now. Right. Get you, <laughs> and touch that screen. Yeah, exactly. Go There's not enough disinfectants. So there is a guy on a flight, and the lady ends up tweeting it because her friend is on the airplane and doesn't have a Twitter account, but videos this. He's taken off his shoes. His feet are on the wall, obviously in first class, on either side of the monitor, the TV. And he's then, seeing Bulkhead. And, and Bulkhead. Mm. And he then changes the movie that he's watching or selects the movie by using his feet to flip flip the screen people he's using the touch screen with his toes and actually trying his to bear his... disgusting feet <gasps> yeah and, oh. and uh and a death penalty man i'm sorry like, yes land the plane hey land but the plane look you, <laughs> you, you we fly a lot okay yes and I, yes. i'm saying that rhetorically we the, the three of us at fly this table 40, yeah constantly flying yes do you believe the disgusting shit that you see now no. more than ever no. there people have no it's like i sounds like such an old man but it's like People's sense of decency and courtesy. Okay, the last time I almost, I just I forgot about this. Two days ago, three days ago, Daisy and I fly back from a gig in Detroit. 
We land at LAX. We get up. And look, I, I feel grateful as can be yep. that I can fly first class. Yeah. It's not what it used to be, obviously, but it's still like, and they treat us just with a slightly, I wouldn't even say less. Like we all get treated like shit by the airlines. Yes. Yes. Don't even get me started on the airlines. Yeah. But it's a great people, bus with wings is but, what it is. Yes. But people are so discourteous now. We get up, Daisy's pulling her bag out from the overhead and this dude pushes past her mm -hmm. and gets off the plane. He's got to get off the plane first. Mm -hmm. And I start seething. <laughs> she turns to me and she, she, you know, Daisy doesn't take any shit because as he pushes past her, she goes, what the fuck? Yep. <laughs> this just happened to me too. Same yep. thing. So yep. he's now halfway up the jet bridge. We get our bags. We go. And now I see him round the corner and he's on his phone. And we round the corner. And as soon as we come out of the, into the terminal, He's just, it's not like he's running to make a connection. He's standing just to the right of the door on his phone. And I had to, I went up and I said, you're fucking rude. You need to learn some fucking manners. And he goes, what? I said, you just fucking pushed past my wife like a rude asshole. And he went, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I said, you need to learn some fucking manners. We and Daisy, cannot hang out, no. dude. Daisy, Daisy's like, no. Daisy's, she's like, come on, come on. Goes, Richard, what, what? And I said, I'm, again, should, he, he got away with that. Right. Too many times. Right. And that's why I look at it that way too. No, no, no. She saw to me. She don't say it. Just let it go. N no, because he's going to do it. What if it's an 80 year old woman and he knocks right. her down? Right. I want the next time this guy tries to do it to go, ah, I should wait a second. The reason that he did that is because no one up, has come up to him and said, stop fucking doing that or you're going to get your ass kicked. And frankly, because she's a woman and he probably didn't think that she was with someone. I had a guy love her comedy, not too long ago um, that was, we hadn't even taken off yet. And he's selecting his movie by pounding into the back of my seat. Oh. And so I sat there and I'm trying to be a better human being in my adult age and it's not taking yet but i just <laughs> sat there and i was very calm and finally i just stood up and i was like how can i say this without being combative and i just said hey can you just not press so hard on the back of that because it's making my seat bang forward and he said you're gonna have to fucking deal with it now that i was sitting there. oh i would have lost my shit you were there oh, oh i yeah. never got oh, no. to say another word yeah. richard oh, no. because I, oh yeah it, it almost went i, I said it got so loud i thought they weren't going to take off i because the yeah, flight I attendants off. absolutely i said hey asshole touch your seat again do it do it one more time go ahead fucker do it do it and you hey, what's your fucking problem my fucking problem is you dude we sit up here for oh. a reason and we pay money we don't want assholes like you just fucking making her uncomfortable so not get the fuck off or get the fuck up he was trying to get him and to so get up. So that's me. I, I, here's the problem with we me. We can't hang out, man. No. <laughs> no or maybe We're going to we be can. in jail. No, here's the problem. That'd be fun, though. It would. Uh, you guys need a Buddhist. <laughs> you need a Buddhist friend. Here's the problem. That's that, what you need. When, when I see injustice like that, like, like uh, here's the thing. He could have just been so cool. I could, yeah. That's what I said. I said, you could have been cool, bro. Yep. You could have said sorry. Instead, you kept doing it, you dick. And, yeah. uh, and I'm, and I'm telling her to fuck And I'm like, yeah. this, like I'm, I'm this. I have no. I'm yeah. like, I don't care. And, and so she, what happens is, is that. The dude finally backed off. He stopped doing it. But I have a tendency, like when it goes bad, I don't, I don't, I stop thinking, I don't remember where I'm at. Right. I don't, you I made don't see him what's going around apologize. Me. It went on for like eight minutes, brutally long oh, I would have made moment. Him apologize too. And he kept telling me, the guy was kind of cocky at first and then he did crazy eyes, which he mm -hmm. does when he gets in that <laughs> zone. Said, it's just my eyes. It's crazy eyes. I call him Richard Mark's eyes after seeing the he thing. He channels, oh, like, <laughs> his mom was manic depressive, schizophrenic. He channels his mom and it, people I hear, I can smell the change in the air. And then the guy said, I'm sorry. And then when we landed, he ran off the plane because yeah. he had told him that they would just deal with it when the plane. So I know the guy was sweating the yeah. whole flight. Yeah, I'm like, like, that's what I said. When we get the plane, we'll have a talk. I said, you and I, when we got the plane, I said, I'll, just wait for me <laughs> or I'll get off first. I'll wait for you. What do you want to do? I was so mad. Here's your <sighs> example. Uh, we moved. Yeah, but don't mess with my girl. If you're just going to mess with someone weak, it's fine. Don't mess with my girl. I, I know that sounds like I'm like I'm like in a, a movie from the 40s. No, no, no. But, and it's not that she can't handle herself. She's oh, like, no, Daisy, she can, Daisy can kick my ass, I'm yeah. sure. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But it's just principle. It's like yeah. you yeah. don't do that. Yeah. Example, we moved into a new place. I went back to get the rest of our stuff. And this guy was pretty verbally abusive and horrible. And I got into it with him and I left. I had handled it. I come home to our new house. I tell him I am talking to him. And he goes downstairs to watch TV. That house was about 10 miles away yeah, in yeah. L.A. Yeah. Um, my phone rings about five minutes later 
and it's him. Mm -hmm. And I go, babe, what what are you doing? Are you downstairs? And he was like, say it again. Tell me what the fuck this asshole said to you. I Shut up. Shut house up. House How did you know which house it was? It his was house our old house that we moved. To live in. He it, drove. We, I thought we had discussed, and he knew I had handled it. We rented a house up on top of Bailey Ridge, <laughs> and uh, and we had actually asked them, and I'd paid for to remodel the whole. It bathroom. doesn't matter, but and, uh, and yeah. the guy, this guy, had told this poor old woman that we had done something wrong, and we we'd have done all the code and everything. It was right. beautiful, and uh, and then she got yelled. The dude yelled at her oh, and went God. off in her face, and so the next thing she knows, she thinks I'm in the house. Ten minutes later, I'm I'm in front of the guy's house. Screaming. I'm this close to the guy, going, "Say it again." Tell me what he said. I'm just and I'm okay. I, he, I, I hear it. He he kept going, and then until I don't know, crazy I, and, eyes. And I just kept stepping forward, and he finally just. Uh, I said, "You don't ever, ever." I go, I go. I'm like, you talk, you you, you you don't seem like a man now. You sure you thought you were a yeah. man to her? You sure weren't a man to me? Anyway, so here's the thing. I get on psycho, <laughs> and I'm sorry, uh, and to my ex wife who's gonna play this in court for everybody. <laughs> uh, just know that I'm always doing the right you can thing. Cut this bit out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, by the way, where are you performing next? Um, do you know my next thing is um, I'm doing some scattered dates here but I'm doing a tour in South America in October right. playing um, Brazil Argentina Chile um, and then a bunch more dates in November December and then Europe in the spring. It's great about the internet. This is going to be this is going to be worldwide. Richard Marks. You can just go to BrianAdams.com <laughs> to see all my tour dates. Richard Marks. And you can get all the dates. He's going to be doing South Carolina Charleston. We've been to that music hall. He's going to be doing Carolina Theater in Durham, North Carolina. Yeah, We've been there. Awesome. This is all coming up in August, Virginia Beach. We've been there. So guys, go check out. I love. Um, we did a gig. Oh, two nights apart. Oh yeah, do we play? Yes. It's one of we our favorite the gigs. Crest. Yeah, Sacramento. Yeah. yeah. Um, you're going to do Shreveport, Louisiana, the Strand, which is where we met. So, no, oh. I, I don't recommend it. Mm. It was awesome. I met you. Exactly. But yeah, so go to richardmarks.com and you can check out all of his tour dates. Also, um we will be for doing... your son, I oh, just yeah. wanted to tell you, this was a news story that I had brought, but in Finland, they actually have a heavy metal knitting championship. Um <laughs> It's oh, he'll coming be all up. up in that shit. Um, of course they do. It's uh, apparently Finland is sort of the mecca of heavy metal, and, and um, they have yeah, the highest so number it. of heavy metal bands per capita. So actually, right now they've combined knitting because that's an obvious match, um, and heavy metal. You can go and compete. I, I couldn't be making this up. I played in Helsinki, let's say five years ago, and I'm with two of my sons, including the heavy metal dude. And it was funny because if you saw Jesse, my son that's into like, he's not really, he loves metal, but it's just really aggressive rock. Right. He's the one of the two is like no tats. N he's never done a drug. Right. Took his first drink on his 21st birthday. He's wow. like, he looks like an accountant. <laughs> he just loves that music and he's an right. incredible musician in that, in that genre. But so I'm, we're walking around downtown Helsinki before my gig. And we, you know, there's like band posters in the coffee shops and stuff. And I stop and I go, guys. Look at this. And there's a picture of six older dudes, like total metal guys. You know what the name of their band was? What? Anal Thunder. <laughs> <laughs> I took a picture of the- Spinal Tap. It's a Spinal Tap. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> anal Thunder. I have to, now I'm going to have to download a track from Anal Thunder. Yeah, yeah I think you should. I think maybe we all should. Music. Maybe yeah. our new music. Where are we going to be? In Florida. Uh, we yeah. are going to Florida. So you can see us in the middle of July on the 26th in Jacksonville, on the 27th Tampa at the Straws Center, and on the 28th Tallahassee Moon. And the new show, people, is uh, uh, it's weird. I've never had this happen. I'm like 22 performances in. I've gotten nine standing ovations. Not that I'm counting standing ovations. <laughs> totally uh, And I've got to say one more thing. Uh, so uh, so uh, Rachel has been working on, she's got a show. She's got hour 20. And she started, and you know, as you know, create, you can't stop creativity if you're thinking about mm -hmm. it. She she wrote the show about her mom, uh, her, her mom passed a couple years ago. And she's, wrote about, she's writing comedy about the caregiving um, journey that that was. Oh, wow. And so so we were at this club in Austin. What was the name of it again? The, Z the Zach club, Theater. The, the Zach Theater. And it was beautiful, but it was really intimate. Like I walked in and I go, okay, this is going to be, you're like stepping into the womb. I said, do the new stuff. Just just play with that it. That I haven't written yet. And she, she's just kind of riffing and she's telling the story. Uh, but I said, but 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 I said, but one, they'll, they'll embrace you. Trust me. This is the right. room. She went in. She opens the show, warms up for me, does 30 minutes, gets a standing ovation. Standing ovation. 
Follow that motherfucker. Yeah. Have fun, Titus. <laughs> yeah, good. Have a good show, Titus. And now, Titus. Yeah. <laughs> they were like, really? Yeah. Yeah, it was great. They were awesome. They were they were awesome. So come see the new show. It's all new. Yeah. Uh, if you're a Trump supporter, I'm not doing Amerigeddon anymore, uh, but you can get Amerigeddon on Amazon. Oh, also, uh, guys, come out to Flappers on August 13th. I'm going to be hosting for the Burbank Comedy Festival. I'm going to host an all woman show that night. So come out and see me at that, August 13th. And what am I doing? I'm doing it, that year. I'm doing it. You're I'm actually doing. performing at Flappers on the 23rd and 24th. Yep. Awesome. And we'll be doing Campbell Heritage Theater on the 16th of August, too. So. All right. We've now hoarded enough stuff. Guys, go to uh, Twitter. Uh, oh, Richard Marks on Twitter. Yep. Uh, by the way, if, you, uh, if, if you're if you part of the resistance, definitely go to Richard Marks on Twitter. That is Marks with an X, not K-S. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, at Titus Nation on Twitter and uh, Ray Ray Bradley. Uh, and for myself, a bombshell Ray. And the amazing Richard Marks. Oh, it was really uh, fun. I knew it, it was, would be. Uh, dude, you know, man, I, I I gotta say, we it's one of my favorite interviews. Uh, uh, to be as uh, famous, successful, and uh, prolific as you are, to be, uh, there's no asshole in you. And oh, all, there is. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, no. Yeah, but only when you're on a Korean Airlines flight. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening and watching, guys. Uh, for myself, Bomb Show Ray, and Richard Mox. Later. Peace out. Guys, say goodbye. Oh, bye. It was yeah. really fun. Just call See you guys. Richard Mox. Richard Mox. Hey, it was Richard Mox. <laughs> yeah, for, that's, Mox. that's what Daisy calls him. Mox. Bada bing, bada boom. Mox. Twat. <laughs> <laughs>